Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-8. When last we listened in, the party had obtained rooms and Sister Elaine had made her way to the temple and gained lodging there. The next morning, the party ate, which caused some consternation among the new friends, and Welby O'Toole had obtained several pieces of fruit. We rejoin them as they reach a posting totem where employment opportunities are listed. Now yeah, there's a lot more than there were at the inn, but I'm not getting a feel for any of these jobs. They're all menial tasks, said Fargus, the stout human being. The group circled the totem, examining the employment offerings, but did not see much that interested them. Here's a job for caravan guards. Pays three gold crowns a day, remarked Cave Silvertongue, but added, I really don't want to be someone else's long-term employee. Remember interjected Lady Irena, that we will be meeting up with Sister Elaine at some point today, so we should be wary of taking on anything immediately. The group poured over their options, nodding in agreement, until Welby jubilantly tore off a paper and announced, Ta-da! Here it is. Easy, not too tough, not too time-consuming, and it pays five gold crowns. Fargus and Cabe whistled in unison, then laughed at the elven mage, as she grabbed the paper. Lost dog? You want us to find us a lost dog? What's the matter with you, Welby? The pair argued over the merits of an easy job and an exorbitant recovery fee, while the other two men watched intently. It's a dog, elf, exclaimed the halfling. How tough could it be to find one lost dog? It even says it has a collar on it. You can find this pooch Deliver him to this mistress alien foul blah, blah. Hell, it's even a beagle. These dogs are always friendly. What's your beef with the job? With hands on her hips, Irena began to explain that the task seemed to be below them as budding adventurers. She pointed out that her concern was they might not be taken seriously in the long run and could potentially hurt their reputations. Fargus and Cabe entered the conversation and sided with Welby, pointing out that five crowns would fetch them basic supplies and a little bit extra. They didn't feel like the task was menial and added that it shouldn't take too long. If we can find this mutt and return him and meet up with a holy sister, we can find real jobs, said Cabe. Knowing that the vote was against her, Irena considered her the point and conceded. The group wandered the streets of Phoenix, inquiring with the multitude of people they encountered if they had seen the dog sketched on the paper. After two hours, Irena renewed her objection to the task, pointing out that it had been neither quick nor easy, and she had noticed that Welby's pockets seemed more full than they had set out on the job. They were just about to give up when Cabe spotted the dog in between a few buildings. Hey, there it is, he exclaimed. Quick, what's the name of the dog again? Welby scanned the paper and announced, Scotty, it's Scotty. The young adventurers doubled over and slowly began to walk towards the dog in a line, whistling and calling its name. With its tail wagging and one ear drooped over, the dog stared at the approaching people and began to bark. As the group neared the quarry, Fargus advised that he was going to jump in three, two, one and then dove at the canine, who deftly sidestepped the ranger and zipped around the back of a nearby building. Arena attempted to grab the dog, but fell over Fargus, and Cabe was knocked off balance in the tumult. Welby quickly sidestepped the pile of adventurers and gave chase to the small beagle. The other three scrambled to their feet and gave chase, but had already lost sight of their friend and prey. Looking around, the group split up and went off in three directions to search for their missing member. Lady Irena located Welby first, who was near a wrought iron gate in a small alleyway. A few moments later, a huffing and puffing pair found them. Gasping, Cabe asked Welby about the dog. 
I was chasing him and he went into this grate. I think he's in the sewer. Fargus and Cade pushed the other two out of the way and took a hold of the heavy metal object and attempted to lift it, but failed. <sighs> Give me a second, huffed the large human as he gathered his breath. He nodded to Cade, who also nodded. Okay, we lift in three, two... But the count was cut short by a deep voice telling them to halt. The group turned back towards the street to find the alley filled with guards. Oi, what do you think you're doing there, scum? Asked a rather well-kept guard. The group rose, showing their hands and showing that their weapons were holstered. Lady Irena quickly spoke to the guard sergeant and explained the situation. He nodded to his retinue and a bunch of guards moved towards the grate and looked down and nodded from side to side. Looks like you lost your dog again, milady. Are you people new to Phoenix? The group confirmed the man's suspicions, and he, conf he continued by explaining that entry into the sewer was not permitted. He pointed out that the tunnels below the city were filled with all sorts of nasty creatures and scuff laws. He pointed out that they'd best move along before they were dragged in front of the magistrate. Back at the Temple of Dilo, Sister Elaine sat in an ornate chair, listening to an older man expound on the tenets of the faith. As he droned on, she noticed the opulent furnishings in the office and quickly realized that the High Bishop had asked her a question. He stared blankly at her, awaiting an answer. Thinking quickly, she replied, Because of Dilo? Which brought a smile to the old man's face. Exactly, my dear. Your knowledge of our faith is to be commended. Few people realize that that is the answer. Well done. She smiled meekly and listened for several more minutes as the priest droned on about the laws of their faith. As she began to lose focus again, the high bishop engaged her. So you want to travel the countryside and spread our faith? That can be a risky proposition, young initiate. I hope you do not plan on doing so on your own. Sister Elaine shook her head and explained to the man about her traveling companions. She expressed her desires and intentions while the priest listened intently. After several minutes of contemplation, he nodded in approval. It seems that your career has already been decided by you. I hope Dilo is in agreement with you. Let us pray for your safety in your commission of your task. Clasping her hands together and closing her eyes, she recited the prayer of her deity with the old man. When she opened her eyes, a small crystal vial sat on the desk in front of her. Quizzically, she looked to the High Bishop. The road to adventure is paved with blood and dangers, he stated. You may find this elixir useful, but I hope you do not need it at all. One quaff of this liquid will restore your vitality in a time of need. You have two in this bottle. Please use them wisely, my dear. Thank you, High Bishop. Thank you very much, she said happily. I will do my best to spread the faith to those who need it. The High Bishop extended his hand and received a kiss to his ring from her. Patting her on the head, he reminded her not to get her head spread open in the process. She returned to her room and gathered her meager possessions before leaving the confines of the temple. She returned to the Phoenix Inn and inquired about her new friends. But the chesty barmaid had overheard the conversation and explained that her group had gone to the posting totem to look for jobs. Directions were given and she arrived a short time later. Looking around, she watched the bustle of people moving about, but did not see her friends. She began to peruse the options available to her when she heard a familiar whiny voice of Welby complaining. Turning around, she saw the group headed her way with several guards shadowing them. Well, this doesn't look promising, she muttered under her breath. As the new group rejoined her, the guards peeled off to go about their normal business. New friends of yours, she inquired. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.